May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Winston Churchill, arguably one of the greatest political and military leaders of the 20th century, well, at least the most well-known, planned every detail of his funeral at St Paul's Cathedral in London. He worked clandestinely with cathedral staff under the code name Operation Hope Not. That code reveals a lot about humanity's attitude towards death, doesn't it? But one aspect of his funeral seemed absolutely inspired. A bugler played the last post from the west end of the cathedral. When the sombre notes of that solo bugle echoed through the cathedral, I can imagine the stiff upper lips of many quivered. I bet there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Then a full minute of silence. And then, surely, to the surprise of all mourners who crowded into St Paul's that day, another bugler, this one positioned in the east, rose to play the Ravalli, the happy morning bugle that gives soldiers the get up and go, the need to kickstart their day. Perhaps after the tears, a few suppressed chuckles slipped out. Always a commanding presence, even from the dead, Churchill had relayed two important messages. First, he offered a testimony to the shock, joy and surprise of the resurrection. At the last day, we'll all rise to the sound of the Lord playing a heavenly version of the Ravalli and walking us up to the new life, new earth, the new Jerusalem we just heard about. It wasn't random that the Ravalli came from the east, where the sun rises, the, d the direction of the altar facing in many churches, the direction from which we expect Christ to return again. Secondly, Churchill bid them to press on, to attend to the day at hand and the life ahead, here and now. But let's go back in our imagination to that minute of silence because that's where we can locate this great feast day, the one we've gathered to celebrate, All Saints Day. That minute of silence is where we find ourselves wondering, is this really it? What comes next? Do we have enough tears left to cry? Is there enough patience to persevere? Somewhere, in the uncomfortable silence, having heard the last post and waiting for the Ravalli. Somewhere in the waiting for God to descend among us and wipe away every tear from our eyes. Somewhere in the hoping that Jesus' words are trustworthy and true. Somewhere in the trusting that God is preparing for all peoples, all saints, my favourite saints and yours, those dearly departed from this community and abroad, people we miss dearly and people we never knew, that God is preparing a feast of rich food and well-aged wines. Somewhere in that discomforting silence where we wait for God to swallow up death forever, even as it abides with us here and now. And in this quiet and disquieting moment, when we wait, hope, trust on our best days and fight despair on our worst, that is the moment that we meet God. Today's liturgy feast and gospel reading all encourage us to feel the grief and sorrow, maybe even the impatience at having to wait that long minute before we hear the Ravalli, or anger at how death takes away, at least in physical form, the people that we love. We are given the courage to wait, together, nourished around this table, hearing God's story in our stories and pleading, like Mary did, for Jesus to come and take away death. 
Today's gospel story is a remarkable one found only in John's gospel. The raising of Lazarus is the event that provokes the necessity of Jesus' death in the eyes of that his day's elite. After Lazarus was raised, the religious and political leaders were focused on eliminating him. There was something so threatening in Jesus' disruption of the world on the world's terms. Jesus is distraught, weeping, disturbed, maybe even angry and certainly grief-stricken. And yet, he is fully in charge, not operating on our preferred timetable, but on his own with a larger purpose in mind, that of engendering trust or belief in the crowd that had gathered around him. Mary articulates what for many of us feel when someone close to us dies. Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus doesn't directly respond to this. Instead, he begins to take charge, first finding out where the body is and then issuing a series of short commands. Take away the stone. Lazarus, come out. Unbind him and let him go. What would it be like to prayerfully wonder what the Holy Spirit might be telling us in those words of Jesus? Take away the stone. What stones in your life need to be removed so that Jesus can get to you? Ask for the grace for the, that stone to be taken away. Lazarus, come out. Jesus knows us each by name and calls each of us. Even death can't deafen our ear to Jesus' call. Lazarus, come out. Unbind him and let him go. Sometimes each one of us needs help becoming free, losing ourselves from the chains that bind us to death-dealing ways. Or to whom in your life can Jesus say, go and unbind your friend? The abundant life is available for him, for her, for you, here and now. Even in your grief, even in your tears, even in your longing to be reunited with your beloved, who is now part of that great cloud of witnesses. Each of these commands offers good material for our own prayer life. When we pray, just like when we receive the sacraments, we are closer to the saints because we are placing our hearts and minds in a nearer presence of God. Jesus is very explicit as to why he raised his friend Lazarus. He did it so that the crowd back then, and you and me today, might trust in the God who sent Jesus to raise him, in the Father who raised the Son on the third day, in the Lord who will swallow up death forever. This story inspires us in our waiting, in our hoping, in our trusting, in that long silence between the last post and the revali. And maybe, just maybe, in heaven, the equivalent of the revali goes just like this. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. And maybe, just maybe, every Sunday, we come back here to hear those words, to wake up to it, maybe even join in with the angels and the archangels and all the company of heaven, including those saints we remember and grieve and are grateful for and celebrate this day. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Amen.